The message has been received loud and clear. This is the type of gaming PC build that you guys want to see. ZTT, please make a $1,000 pure performance PC. Zach, please, you need to make a $1,000 pure performance PC build. I think you should do a pure performance build for both $750 and $1,000. All right, I'm giving you exactly what you want here, including the $750 pure performance build as well, but you need to get subscribed because that one's coming later. Today is what I'd call a perfectly dialed in $1,000 pure performance gaming PC. Trust me, we didn't spend a single extra dollar on aesthetics. I'll be showing you exactly how to build this for yourself and we'll be testing it in both 1080p and 1440p so you know exactly what it's capable of. All after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall and you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18 and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have windows keys but also a ton of other stuff such as office and even game keys for platforms like steam origin and uplay and they even have console stuff too like psn and xbox prepaid cards as well activating windows is super simple and only takes like three minutes total so activate windows today and remove that nasty watermark and don't forget to use ztt18 for 25 percent off all right so there is a disclaimer here because we're actually leaving a little bit of performance on the table but it's not for aesthetics right now specifically one thousand dollar builds are in such a tricky situation because you have to debate about using the newer AM5 CPUs like the Ryzen 5 7600 or the older AM4 CPUs like the Ryzen 5 5600. The problem or the situation is that if you use the older AM4 CPUs, you'll actually get more FPS and thus more performance right this very second. By using a cheaper AM4 CPU, this also allows you to use a cheaper motherboard and cheaper DDR4 RAM compared to the AM5 and DDR5 alternatives. You can then use this saved money towards a better GPU, thus giving you more performance right now. On the flip side, and what we did here today, is we're using the more expensive AM5 components, so we'll have a little bit less money to spend on our graphics card. My CPU, motherboard, and DDR5 RAM are all more expensive compared to an AM4 setup, which means less room for the more important component, the GPU. In my opinion though, if I'm dropping $1,000 on a brand new gaming PC in 2024, I don't want it to have previous generation components, especially the RAM. I want the latest stuff in here. The trade-off is that we'll have a much wider upgrade path for the future though with this more expensive AM5 setup. This will work with Ryzen 9000 series which isn't even out yet and possibly even further than that. If you want to go with the 5600 though, you won't really have any meaningful upgrade path after that. Hopefully that all made sense. In a very quick recap, we're basically sacrificing a little bit of performance for a much better upgrade future potential. So let's start breaking down this parts list. Starting with the CPU, which is probably the biggest choice like I was just saying in a $1,000 build right now, I'm going with the Ryzen 5 7600, but I got a little trick up my sleeve. These are normally about $220 any day of the week on places like Amazon or Newegg, but I actually decided to dabble on AliExpress, of course, because these are going for $178 right now. That's absolutely a steal and a half, and for a pure performance gaming PC, we need to save money where we can. We're saving about $40 to $50 with this choice, and with that extra money, that actually is the difference between a 1080p GPU and a 1440p GPU in this situation. Now, realistically, if someone is interested in a $1,000 build, they aren't going to be absolutely hard capped and your budget will be a little bit more flexible. But for the purpose of this video, AliExpress is definitely the way to go. If you have a more flexible budget, then feel free to just buy from Amazon or Newegg. This Ryzen 5 7600 is a super powerful mid-range CPU. And more importantly, it gets us on that latest AM5 socket and DDR5 RAM. So that's why I like it for any mid-range build right now. Speaking of that socket, next up we have the motherboard. And this here is the Gigabyte B650M D3 HP. For a pure performance build, we're just going with whatever the cheapest B650 option is that's available other than some of those super cheap two RAM slot boards that I don't really want anything to do with. Consider this the cheapest reasonable build right now and that's all we need for this build. Following that we have the RAM and this is the Silicone Power Zenith Gaming 32 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 6,000 megahertz. Over the past couple of weeks this has continued to be pretty much the cheapest 32 gigabyte kit at 6,000 megahertz and it's nothing special but it's exactly what we need for this type of project. There are a couple of models just a few dollars cheaper than this one but I think the timings on this one combined with the price are just the best value right now. And just as a reminder, 16 gigabyte kits of DDR5 aren't really as popular as 32 gigabytes is moving towards becoming the new standard, so just go with 32 for this build. I do think that there are a few 16 gigabyte kits available though, but they're just not as cheap as they should be, so we're buying off of value here. Moving on, we have the SSD, and this is the Crucial P3 Plus, which is a one terabyte NVMe Gem 4 drive that I scooped up for $63 on Amazon. This is an entry-level NVMe drive according to the tier list with a 5,000 
over 4200 read and write speed and this is all we're really looking for when we're concentrated on pure performance and if you do need to get to that tier list just go to zttbuildhelp.com which is completely free and we have the ssd tier list right up there for you along with the other resources that i use for almost every one of my builds you can use this page as a bookmark and launch point for all of your gaming pc build research we're going to add more and more stuff to it in the near future as well and just as a reminder you can choose to go with a slightly faster ssd or a slightly better ram kit but for a pure performance build especially with our strict budget we have to stay focused on the main goal by buying the slightly cheaper ssd slightly cheaper motherboard and some of the other components that allows us to spend more money on the parts that will directly give us more fps like the cpu and gpu i'm not necessarily saying that this is the best mentality to have when building a gaming pc this is just what we're doing for the challenge of today's video this point is really emphasized during our case selection as this is just a 44 dollar deep cool matrix 40 and we actually use this in our recent 400 dollar pure performance build guide you look familiar as do you. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense out in the real world for a $1,000 bill. And I also hate using the same case multiple times in a row, but this is simply just the best available all black case that's almost perfect for pure performance gaming PCs. The reason why I say almost perfect though is because it only comes with one fan in the back for exhaust. So you'll probably wanna find some 120s that you have laying around from a previous project or just spend a few extra bucks to grab a couple of them. For a $1,000 build, I'd say the minimum is to just throw two more up here at the front for intake and then you'll be fine. But ID cooling actually actually sent me these super clean AF125 dash case, so I threw them in here. I actually really like the boxy squared off design of these, but again, you don't really need to spend money here if you have some extra 120s from a previous project. After that, we have the power supply, and we're actually finally starting to get a few good deals on the budget ends of things lately. This market has been awful, but it looks like it's turning itself around. This is the EVGA Supernova 650 GT, which is a very solid tier B unit with 650 watts, fully modular, and an 80 plus gold rating, which was sitting on Amazon for just 65 bucks. Now, obviously we're not using any cable extensions in a pure performance build, unfortunately. So I apologize now for how weird these power connectors look going into the motherboard and the graphics card. It just doesn't look right to me. But while we are looking at that GPU, because of the savings we made from some of the other components, especially that CPU from AliExpress, that allows us to squeeze in an RX 7700 XT, which is a very powerful and underrated card. This is specifically the ASRock Challenger, which was just the cheapest model available. And I grabbed this for a super nice $420. Up until this video, I've actually been on the fence as to whether or not we call the 7700 XT a 1080p graphics card or a 1440p graphics card. But after we look at the benchmarking section, we're definitely gonna get our answer. One final part we have to cover though is the CPU cooler. And again, shout out to ID Cooling for the hookup here. This is their frozen A410 black, but honestly, I definitely could have used this for a pure performance build anyway, even if they didn't send it. These only cost $27 brand new and it not only looks super clean, but it performs very well for the money. We ran some Cinebench stress tests and usually I wouldn't recommend pairing a 220 ish dollar cpu with a less than 30 dollar cooler but our absolute max peak was only 80 degrees which is actually quite solid ideally you want to keep this near the 70s but remember that this is a full 100 utilization being pegged the entire time during gaming we will typically get nowhere close to this temperature for the gpu that's a different story because we typically do want our gpu to be pushed to 100 the entire time but we're good to go here as our asrock challenger 7700 xt only peaked up to 72 degrees with that being said here's what our entire parts list is looking like and we're right Right there at our target mark of $1,005 in total. Keep in mind, if you didn't want to shop on AliExpress, this would be around $1,050. And if you do need to buy some extra fans, it could be a little bit more expensive than that. Either way though, I can comfortably say that this is about a $1,000 gaming PC. So let's put it to the test and see what kind of performance is possible at this price range. We'll start with the 1080p benchmarks first. And honestly, we're not going to stay here long. We put absolutely every game except the competitive shooters at 1080p with ultra settings. And this 7600 and RX 7700 XT dominated every single one one of them. I was pretty confident going into this that the 7700 XT would be capable of this in 1080p, but what I didn't know is how it would perform in 1440p, so let's move on to those. Starting with the game that I feel like half the planet is playing right now, Helldivers 2 of course, here in 1440p we cranked it up to the high preset and we still got above that 60 FPS mark. This game not only looks amazing, but there's certainly some optimizations to be made still since this is a brand new title, so this number should continue to increase over time along with the spread of democracy that is. After that we tested Cyberpunk 2077 and here we actually remained at ultra settings while in 1440p and we still got a super smooth 75 fps consider me shocked but i did not expect the 7700 xt to dominate a 1440p title like this same thing with starfield at 1440p ultra without the help of fsr we still got above that 60 fps target mark and this pc is just running smooth as butter in ultra settings we can even play modern warfare 3 in 1440p ultra at 166 fps which will give you the ability to fully utilize a 1440p monitor with a higher refresh rating i think 
it's safe to say that that's exactly what you should be pairing with a build like this. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and other than the competitive shooters and Helldivers 2 being at high settings, everything else remained in 1440p Ultra, which is just absolutely crazy. This 7600 and 7700 XT had no problems crushing these games, and definitely don't waste your time with a 1080p monitor with a build like this. So yeah, after looking at the data, we can come to the conclusion that this is indeed not a 1080p, but rather a 1440p system, and honestly, that just gets me even more excited about the future of PC building and gaming. For 1000 bucks, you can comfortably play even the more demanding titles like Cyberpunk, Starfield, and Helldivers 2 in 1440p, and honestly, for a pure performance build, this PC doesn't even look that bad. If I had an extra 100-ish dollars to spend, I would have gotten a more aesthetic case with ARGB fans and definitely some cable extensions, you don't need a ton of extra money to boost the aesthetics. If you are thinking about copying this build and going down the pure performance route, you could do that, but then just upgrade the aesthetics piece by piece over time. There's nothing wrong with that. And as a quick reminder, we will be selling this build over on zttbuilds.com slash drops on April 1st. Definitely keep your eyes peeled for some sort of April 1st trickery, but for real, I'll post this up for $800 and obviously it's going to sell super quickly. If you are trying to take advantage of these crazy monthly drops where I literally sell these builds for less than the cost of the parts, the best way to do that is to become a Discord exclusive, which you can do in our ZTT server. It's always linked in the description. And by the way, I am starting to find some real love for these pure performance build guides because the performance we're getting is pretty wild. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see the $750 build that's coming soon. I promise I'll use a different case for that one. And if you did want to watch my other pure performance build guide, which is already out now, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.